this guy goes just about in here. I can't see anything. Hello again. So last time, um, last time, the last vlog thing I did it was with the Tyranids from Leviathan and I had a good time with it building along so I just wanted to recreate that magic. Combat Patrol is fresh and new as the new edition is out. I've been playing a lot of it with Uncle Adam and uh, yeah I think both of us have realized that if you have a copy of Indominus and you also have most of the models you need for the Necron Combat Patrol I thought it would be funny to smash up the box, but then I didn't like the take. You'll need a Canoptech Doomstalker. But yeah, I like these combat patrol boxes, the kind of all-in-one army. It's I've been enjoying just these smaller collections, playing Warcry with, with Uncle Adam as well. Um, yeah, it's just a fun way to, to build up the collection, and you're not going to be adding any more models to your combat patrol, at least. I'm sure I can save the recipe if I want to build this into a large and proper army, but yeah, these uh, smaller sets give you some time to kind of... I want to try something a little more you know, different looking and a, a little customized. Um, yeah, the Necrons already have uh, this like undead theme to, my, to them. They already have a lot of battle damage on them and stuff, but anyway, I, I pull out some extra supplies in the form of skulls and chains because it's 40k after all. Um, I also made my own, usually I go pretty hard on the, the bases, but I made my own custom mix, just some, some pieces of slate, various sized uh, chunks of dirt and fine sand, it's all mixed together in there. Uh, yeah, this should give me a nice enough base covering. I also have this skeleton in a cage left over from from a Warcry scenery set. I need that hanging off of the Kenoptech Doomstalker. So, yeah, I, it was pretty rough. I, I fidgeted around, kind of trimming. Luckily, it was hung from a large loop, but just trying to trim the loop to the right size and just jam it up into the uh, undercarriage. The model has some shoulder pads on it. Uh, there, there's still, like, a bit of the join showing, so I just added another skull. Magnificent. With all the models prepped and ready, it was time for a hefty coat of chaotic red. I don't usually work from a red base coat, and in that way I mean I've never done it before. But yeah, what I imagine is the models stalking across some kind of uh, dusty earth, so this kind of rusty red showing through on the bottom. Sure, that'll be a nice touch. That's it for day one. I'm still letting the spray paint chill out. Uh, earlier, when I was setting up for the project, I pulled out some colors that I think will be useful to me. I've got some strong tone, matte black, desert yellow, maybe. Either, either, desert, either desert yellow or archangel red. I don't know if I'm going with like a uh, ochre yellow kind of earth tone or the Cheeto dust tone that we're all familiar with. I also have hot pink and safety orange. The Necrons have that the Goss weapons, that green effect. This is another decision that I have yet to make, but whatever, I'm, I'm on the road. I also have some uniform gray, skeleton bone, and white. That'll be the, the main colors for the armor. Uh, gun metal and rough iron. I'll have some bare metallics showing, but yeah, I'd like to break that up with just some brass and some silver tones. See what I can get away with on this, but yeah. Day two, I'm alive, but it never seems like I left because this is a continuous video. But I'm picking back up where I left off. As you can see, I've been working along a little bit. Um, I also pulled one model off to the side to do a test model, kind of build out some of my choices. Um, but yeah, having the one test model complete, now I'm like, all right. Every step takes an amount of time, and you only have so much energy you can spend on every day. So I wanted to get most of the base coats out of the way today. Um, I also I, I looked at my colors from that I'd chosen yesterday, decided to make some changes. I swapped out the uniform gray for regiment gray instead. Made a call on the bases, decided to go with that that orange out kind of powdered look, so I, I swapped in some molten orange, 
And I also made the call on using, I don't know if I was going to use pink or orange from the air paint uh, neon line. Pink is the way. Um, I'll get to that later. And uh, yeah, I'll also be throwing a little bit of gunmetal down today. But after I get the gray and the skeletal horde laid up, then the deep gray base coats, after that I'm going to come back through with a white highlight and then I'll pick out the little silver bits and that'll be enough for today. I, I have 18 models to do this to, they're, they're detailed, they're various sizes, so yeah, I just want to set things out in achievable blocks for myself. I have other things that I have to do every day as well, I'm sure you do too, so just breaking it, it down into a few steps and I'm not turning the lights off until those steps are complete. I'll see you tomorrow. Ahem. Day three. Uh, okay, last night I painted it until like a little bit past midnight and still didn't have everything done. So I did a little bit of catch up this morning. Back on schedule. Um, I had some more metallics to add into the situation. Some of the models they have like power packs on their weapons so I used some rough iron and yeah everything was all prepped up for a wash of dark tone. I'd be throwing this over the deep gray that's been hit with a light misting of white, over the silver parts, the rough iron parts. Everything's getting a wash and yeah it unifies everything nicely sinking into the crevices. I try to catch some of the tubes at certain angles. Um, we'll see if that highlight shows through but it's going quickly. I also mixed up a warm red or a deep orange tone. I don't know, it's kind of mixing and matching and that's the fun of projects like this. I don't need to use something out of the bottle necessarily because I won't have to go back to it. So I just mixed up a cool kind of, I guess like a construction barrel orange and hit the right shoulder pad of every model. Adds to the industrial look of things. Here and there I had added some skeletons onto the models. They've been hit with everything else, I guess, minus the, the gray in some cases, so I just grabbed a, a bottle of speed paint and laid down some algae green. Um, I thinned it down a little bit. Yeah, I don't know, it's it's a nice spot color for everything. I like, I like the green being involved. Next up, I had a little piece of foam in my hands, um, doing the kind of sponge chipping method, you know, just dabbing the sponge in a little bit of black paint, wiping most of it off on the paper towel, and then just giving the model a tap. Uh, here and there, kind of swiping it across some of the, the corners and edges, areas that will get a little bit more wear and tear, but yeah, just a general light chipping here. It's it's easy to overdo this. You don't, you know, if, if you press too hard with the sponge, you're going to make a very wide mark and things will look out of scale, so yeah, just press lightly Use a little bit of water to just assist in like the flow of paint, but yeah, you're not looking for dilution. I just, I didn't want to be working with a crusty brush, so, or a crusty sponge, so I had a little bit of water into the situation. Another detail not on every single model is some small bits of ruins on the bases here and there. I just grabbed a dry brush and stippled on some skeleton hoard, just a, a nice kind of light ivory. It gives me a, a stony ruined texture. I'll airbrush over this later and unify. Um, yeah, I, I could paint this a different color, but the idea here is to go quickly and just utilize the right tools and get that kind of, uh, I'll get that kind of look. We'll see when it's done. This part is the part I was waiting for most of all. It's, it's all about the proper order of operations with everything. You're kind of stacking back and forth like I get the, uh, the airbrushing done, I pick out the deep gray, then I pull out the shoulder pad, I do all of the stippling. Now I loaded up some strong tone in my airbrush and just coming up from the bottom at like a 40 degree angle, just kind of spraying upwards, unifying everything, adding a little bit of brown to the, the red toned shadows. Um, also just from like straight on hitting them across the shins to just add to the silhouette, you know, as, as the eye travels upwards on the model, it gets a little bit brighter. Um, yeah, I did this two times. Just, uh, you don't want to spray too much of a wash through the airbrush. It'll, it'll just pool up and start running around. I was, I was just going for more of a controlled glaze by using it this way. 
Now I had some momentum going. I threw some molten orange into the airbrush and uh, yeah, just I wanted to look a little dust blown, so catching the bottoms of the feet or whatever these models have, some are floating, some are crawling. But yeah, just getting a little a light dusting of this sort of orange terracotta color in the form of molten orange. Uh, I hit the bases with that too. And yeah, here we are, present day. You can see them behind me. Uh, I have a lot of momentum going right now. I, I might be able to finish these. I mean, I, I have to lay down the, the pink. Um, I'll just keep going at a comfortable pace. I'm going to set myself up for success tonight and mask off the power weapons with a little low-tech masking tape. Maybe I can stop myself from then just continuing to paint. Time will tell. Time will see. Time will see. All right, next time. Hey, day four. Yes, I stayed up last night. I started with the masking tape, and then I was like, this is way too tedious. I have been doing that a lot lately. I'm like, oh yeah, poster tack exists. So there's my mushy marshmallow man mashed up in a mishmush of mutton. Uh, but it was the perfect, ma there's so many angles to, to cover, but it was, it was a good uh, masking off. And I had more energy last night. I continued to work. Um, I painted the, the blades black, and I was about to airbrush white in place, and then remembered that I had the piece of foam. So I took some white airbrush paint and stippled it, and I went for kind of a, you know, a waving pattern like we're used to seeing on power weapons. Let that dry, hit it with a second coat to create a little more saturation and variation, and then through the airbrush, just laid down some hot pink. Uh, I hit it a little heavier in the pure black areas because it looked a little toneless, but yeah, I'm really happy with the way that these came out. This much better. Um, so now ahead of me, I have. I'm about to stream. That's that's happening about in about an hour from now, and yeah, I have some final touches that I want to add to the models. I'm going to dry brush some skeletal horde across the bases. I think I'll add some. I have some weathering powder. Um, a little bit of orange weathering powder will be involved. I want to highlight the silvers. I'll dry. I'll just use the dry brush for that. Um, and there are certain areas that have, I, I look at this and I'm, I'm really happy with the kind of scale modeling approach that I've taken. I didn't, you know, do a lot of like crazy edge highlights, but there are some areas where I would like to put just a touch like on the top of the Doomstalker, that, that large cannon just being deep gray, it would look better with some edge highlights on top. Yeah, so we'll see if I can control myself. Um, but yeah, I'll be streaming for three hours, so I'll just put time into it and see what I think of. But yeah, I also expect, I mean, I'm going to have to lay down some white on all of the eyes, get a base coat, you know, just throw the hot pink over that. And then some of the skulls, yeah, the, the few bits of bone that I've scattered in there, I'll give those a highlight of Skeletal Horde. But yeah, we'll... uh check back in after the stream and see where I got to and if I had any extra ideas. All right. Ah, uh, Rue, stream complete. Um, lucky for me that everything was finished in three hours and four minutes. It was the perfect length of streaming time. But yeah, the only thing that I ended up adding to it on stream was putting a little bit of strong tone into all of the divots. There's some kind of sculpted damage on the models and it is dropping a little wash in there to pay those some attention. All good. I've got another army that's ready to fight. I'll be uh, teaching combat patrol to my brother this weekend, so this is finished right on time and yeah, it was just four days, one day being intense. Everything else I took it in stride at a leisurely pace and just yeah, using the, the right tools for every situation. I thought about the edge highlighting and then I, I didn't go back and do it. I wanted this scheme and this project to be simple but impressive. I wanted to share something that was achievable to 
somebody just with an airbrush. If you, as long as you have a professional knowledge of the airbrush, then you'll do just fine with these techniques. But technique, you know, there, there was not much that was uh, in the wrist to create all of this. I feel like this is something anyone can do if they follow along with it. And I'm really happy with the results. It's striking and bold, just kind of aiming for all high spots as far as the painting goes. Not everything has to be a competition piece, but I suppose a game of 40k would be its own competition. So, competition pieces, sure. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I appreciate all of your support on Patreon. I really don't have much to say that hasn't been said over the last few days. So, until we meet again, remain unchained. <laughs>